Our monthly award program just dropped for June and we have 97 Lightning Jordan Alvarez. We have a lot of cards in this program. So what I'm gonna be doing today is reviewing all the cards to give my initial thoughts and then go through this program and show you how I will go about getting this done. Without further ado, let's hop on into it. Here's our program. Here he is, Jordan Alvarez. However, we have a lot of cards beforehand to go through and give my initial thoughts. First of all, how do you complete the monthly award program? There are three stages to the program. First, you're gonna do your tops now moments. They're very straightforward. Do all of your tops now moments, get all of the tops now cards, and then do the collection. Once you get the collection done, you'll move on to stage two. Then when you're in stage two, essentially once you get past all these cards, you're gonna be about 65 stars. Once you're in stage two, you're gonna wanna do the June monthly award moments. Do all of these moments, I'll give you another 33 stars, get you to about here. So you have 393 overalls in your inventory to grind parallel XP with. Along with top snail cards, make sure you do your top snail monthly, your top snail PXP. Sorry, I don't know how to speak. Make sure you do this as well. You could do it in conquest, you could do it in event games, you could do it in mini seasons. Whichever mode you prefer, just keep in mind, keep on pitching with the pitchers and then throw some hitters on the team to get the PXP with it as well. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the PXP. You wanna get the most quick way. Once you get a card's PXP done, sell that card on the market and then buy another card, swap out a card basically, and then do that PXP mission. If you don't go that route, you're essentially sluggishly going through the program one by one as you get cards, and it makes it a little bit longer than it needs to be. So I would recommend going that route with it. But now that you get the monthly award program done, which card should you use? Which one should you be going for on your God Squads? Let's go through all the cards where they all kind of have a place on your team. First are Tops Now cards. Obviously, these are no more than beginner cards for people. They aren't bad, like being real, they are not bad cards to use. It's just that they are more so beginner team cards if you don't have anyone to use. I mean, a guy like Riley Green could be a great corner outfield bet. Aaron Hicks, you could play in left if you want to switch hitter in your lineup. Trevino is a nice little catch. Like, these cards aren't bad, but they aren't going to be great. They aren't going to be that competitive to use. However, our monthly awards actually give us some competitive cards that are really nice. First, we have 93 Brandon Drury, who's got good splits versus lefties and pretty respectable versus right, too. I don't know if I would be playing him at third base. However, third base is probably the best place to play him. However, if you don't want to start a card like this, this is going to be a great bench bag. He's got pinch hitter quirk, which means when he pinch hits, he's going to have slightly boosted hitting attributes when he comes up as a pinch hitter. So look for a bench bat versus left. This could be your answer right here. Or you can play him at second, corner outfield. Very versatile card. Daniel Hudson. I'm going to be real. Looks like an okay reliever. High velo fastballs could be good. At least he's got a little bit of velo difference between the four seam and the two seam. But he essentially throws two speeds. Like upper 90s and then upper 80s. Slider should be good. Circle change is always a nice pitch, but I think this will be the worst of the relievers. You'll see when we talk about Jorge Lopez why that card should be a lot better. John Birdie. I know some people are going to look at this card and completely not care about it because of the lack of power. However, you have to consider the speed. 99 speed, steal, and base running aggression. This is going to be a great defensive substitute option but also pinch runner option if you're someone who is rocking maybe Jordan on your team or someone who just has slower speed. Having a bench pinch runner is valuable if you don't have many high speed players on your team. If you want that catcher to pinch run for, something like that, John Birdie's gonna be the go-to pinch runner guy. His hitting actually isn't even that bad for what it's worth too. He's honestly nearly as good as Hannes Wagner, which is kind of sad. Or hey Lopez, I think he's the go-to reliever to bunch. He's a lot like the Clay Holmes monthly award card outlier on the sinker. Means he's gonna throw it very fast, a little faster than normal sinkers. To be a hard-hitting sinker. Actually, like Orge Lopez a lot in BR. And this card should be a very nice reliever option if you're still looking for it in your bullpen. You'll be at least respectable for a bullpen piece. Taiwan Walker. A lot of people might treat this card like Pablo Lopez, where he was the lower overall monthly card with solid hits for nine sinker cutters, so people use them. And this card could definitely be respectable. Solid control, pretty good break, good hits per nine at this point in the game. 
but it's not going to be elite. If you're someone who's really trying to make like a World Series push or something, unless you feel like you need Sinker Cutter, I probably wouldn't be using this card too much. However, you're starting from square one and need a very beginning pitcher. This card is going to be a great one for your team. And then last but not least, Teoscar Hernandez, actually a really good bat overall. He's going to be best served as a bench bat, though, mainly versus lefties with 118 and 112 contact and power. I love Teoscar's swing. He's a great bat versus lefties. He also has respectable speed, which is nice. So, like, you could even use him as, like, a pinch run option late in the game if, since he has that speed. So, great card here. This would honestly be one of the cards I'd be picking for sure in this pack. Then we have our 95s. Got to go over here for that. We got, first of all, my personal favorite card, Brian Reynolds. Center field is weak at this point in the game. You don't have many cards with a great mix of contact, power, speed, and defense at this point in the game. Obviously, Mike Trout is the guy that brings that mix. But outside of Trout, there aren't that many other than, like, maybe George Springer. So I think Reynolds is going to be a super viable center field option. And he's a switch hitter, which you cannot sleep on. Switch hitting is extremely valuable on your team. And the other switch hitter options don't have this much power and are, aren't as viable in center field. So I think Brian Reynolds is a must-try card on your team. I'm going to bench Trout for this card and give him a go. His face of the franchise card was honestly my favorite card in the game for a while. So I'm stoked for Reynolds. Again, another reason he's going to be good is because of Quirks. You need more of a reason to use this card. Quirks will make this card play a little bit above those attributes as well. John Gray, I'm going to be real, does not bring much to the table. He's a 95 overall, which is really it. Um, at least he's got, you know, respectable control and break and all that. But a basic pitch mix. He's got the Joe Random pitch mix. He's not going to be bad as a starter, especially in the very beginning parts of ranked seasons where a lot of people struggle. But if you're really playing in solid hitters, they will likely hit him pretty well. I don't think he'll be any sort of lights out, but if you need some starter help, at least he can bring you that in your rotation. And then Kyle Schwarber, man, teased from getting the lightning card. I know some people are a little bit upset at that, but as you see on the card, he does not have the catcher secondary this year. It's been so long since he's played catcher, he does not have the secondary. However, his bat is great. He mashes versus righties. Incredible bat to have at least in the corner outfield as an option. I think with how well this card can hit, he's worth a try on your team, especially if you play it like all-star rating in rank seasons. Like that bat is unreal. I mean, again, he's gonna get some quirks, so the quirks are gonna slightly make him better as a bat. And if you do really like this card, getting in the parallel five gets him the gold fielding and 57 speed, which will be respectable in the corner outfield. I may not use him the most this time around, I really liked him as a catcher last year. I have first base and corner outfield basically locked right now because they're super competitive positions. However, this is going to be a great option for people if you like using your current players. Then, just to talk about it again, Chris Sale is obtainable now. He's going to be a good starter. He'll be better than the other monthly award starter, is my personal opinion. The hits and case for nine being upper tier. He has good velocity. He's got a high velo sinker. His quirky release is really what makes his cards really good. So the slider feels like it moves a ton because he's throwing it across the body. It's very difficult to kind of sit inside on a sinker with a righty hitter and also slow down to a slider. So he will be a nice starter option if you need it. I'm actually excited to try sale. And then finally, the man himself, Jordan Alvarez. Definitely a top tier corner outfield option at this point in the game. The bat's going to be great. The defense, not so much. However... If you're someone who's running a good speed center fielder, someone with like 90 plus speed and like maybe gold or diamond defense, then Jordan will be an even greater play because at least that center fielder will make up for some of the gaps that Jordan won't cover. I don't recommend playing this card in right. Keep him in left if you can. Left is probably the best place for him anyway. So at least if you get some high parallels on him, he could get up to gold fielding by slow fielders. Not covering the gaps well is going to be a little bit tough. However, how good of a bad he is, I think he's genuinely worth a play if you don't have that corner outfield that you love right now. Then you get all these packs at the end, so you can get all of these cards in your inventory without really losing stubs by just grinding out this program. 
I'm going to be hopping on stream right now, actually, to grind out this program for the rest of the evening. Try to record the debut of all these cards today. By the way, that debut with Yordan and all of the cards in the program will be uploaded tomorrow. So make sure you are subbed to the channel. Keep up with all the uploads. I do upload a lot of tips and all that here in case you do not know. And swing by to Twitch if you want to come hang out with me as I grind out this program. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know in the comments which cards you plan on using on your teams right away. I'm excited to see who you guys plan on using. I'll see you all again on the video tomorrow where we debut these cards or in the stream today. And you all have a great rest of your day. Deuces.